Be prepared for severed heads galore as this video scales the nine-headed terror known as the Lernaean Hydra. Welcome to Mythology's Monsters, and in this video, we'll explore the murky swampland lair near Lake Lerna where this venomous beast lurked, emerging mainly to plague neighboring villages. See how the Hydra could grow back two new heads for every one lobbed off, making it seemingly invincible. Learn how past warriors attempting to defeat the Hydra met grisly deaths from its numerous snapping jaws wringing the eight long necks extending from an armored serpentine body. Understand what made its blood and breath drip lethal poison guaranteed to kill painfully. Then watch as the hero Heracles and his ally Iolaus come up with an ingenious flaming torch trick allowing the just decapitation and cauterization of each neck before new heads could fully form. Finally, we'll see how Heracles used the Hydra's own toxic blood to dip arrows for future battles, overcoming regenerative immortality through brute perseverance. This victory stands today as a symbol of determined fighting spirit against the longest odds. So get ready to watch multiple necks get chopped relentlessly as we dive into the myth of the Nine-Headed Hydra. In ancient Argolid located in the northeast Peloponnese region of Greece sprawls Lake Lerna, a landscape dotted with multiple springs, mountain runoff, and seasonally flooded wetlands. Back in the mythic era this area was largely untamed wilderness where few dared roam far from village gates. For there lurked a monster from the swamps called the Lernaean Hydra that feasted on livestock and unwary travelers when emerging from its unseen lair location. The Hydra possessed an elongated serpentine body reportedly over 20 feet long covered in thick impenetrable scales like armor. Powerful muscles rippled beneath to propel its mass forward allowing lightning reflex strikes. Eight or nine hissing Hydra's heads sat upon long muscular necks extending forward from the main torso each one able to lash out overflowing three rows of razor fangs that shredded through bone and armor alike. The beast's breath used thickly with viscous venom lethal enough to melt mortal flesh straight from the bone within minutes. Many warriors and glory-seeking champions had attempted battling the Lernaean Hydra over generations, hoping to end its periodic village raids by removing its scourge from the swamps permanently. But all met painful failure and demise against this immortal regenerative adversary. For when any head was forcibly cut or ripped off, two more full-grown heads would sprout forth rapidly from the bleeding neck stump within moments. These multiplied reinforcements allowed quick turning of the odds, so the Hydra swiftly gained advantage to finish off attackers brutally. There seemed no permanent way to stop replacement Hydra heads from growing constantly as long as neck tissue remained to sprout them. And the beast's blood and venom would melt shields or kill men outright attempting to reach stabbing range for more than a few seconds. Tales of the invincible Hydra soon spread across kingdoms with none now willing to face it save poor peasants when its hunger turned towards their hovels inevitably. Until the wandering hero Heracles arrived at Lake Lerna during his famous Twelve Labors of Myth. His current task set by King Eurystheus demanded destroying the immortal nine-headed Lernaean Hydra plaguing the area seemingly impossible to kill yet critical to lift for diplomatic reasons. Heracles cared not for politics but lived for impossible combat challenges requiring great warrior skill or creative tactics. And so the hero took up his bow sword, sturdy club and lion skin cloak to venture cautiously into the wetlands seeking clues to the Hydra's lair location. In an area where skeletal remains and dropped gear marked past failed attempts, Heracles used flaming arrows to deliberately provoke his elusive quarry up from concealment. As trees and reeds burned rapidly around the soggy terrain, ripples stirred in a nearby pool heralding the splashing charge of massive reptilian bulk closing fast. Heracles barely dodged aside as the eight-fanged hydra heads atop sinuous necks came crashing from the water and mud to encircle him swiftly. Larger than imagined despite village tales, the putrid breath and spraying venom from so many hissing maws promised agonizing death if even a scratch landed. But the hero kept steel focus, having trained relentlessly for improbable battles other mortals dared not dream facing. With reflexes honed battling ferocious lions barehanded, Heracles ducked and rolled past snapping jaws while unslinging his huge sword to begin actively hacking into each scaly neck within sword reach. 
Dark blood spurted as razor edges bit deep, yet the heads seemed unfazed when decapitated. Already their leaking stumps were sprouting multiple new full-sized hydras emerging wriggling from the sliced necks. If Heracles was shocked at the rapid multiplying heads hissing triumph around his position, he didn't pause in whirling deadly combat moves honed since youth. But his sword strokes fell behind regenerative speed, and soon dozens of fanged hydras surrounded him seeking to overwhelm by sheer numbers. Heracles knew minutes remained before inevitable mistakes against endless strikes brought the true death by venom. Then his sword flashing silver cleaved halfway through another neck as divine inspiration hit. He called urgently for his friend and armed companion Iolaus who had wisely lingered at a distance this whole time. Shouting coded battle language they had invented as boys, Heracles conveyed his improvised plan swiftly. Then bracing hugely thewed legs, his muscles bulged powering both hands to finish severing that one head just as Iolaus charged and perfectly timed. Wielding a flaming torch snatched from the spreading fires, Iolaus jammed it hard against the leaking stump before full new hydras could finish forming from the gushing wound. The searing heat and flames halted regeneration as divine chemistry prevailed against immortal flesh. Heracles yelled triumph and battle lust while holding off the other heads from interfering those precious seconds. Now the comrades fell into a smooth paired rhythm, Heracles chopping hydra heads relentlessly one after another with huge sword strokes. And quick as shadows darting after each cut, Iolaus followed instantly to sear every stump with flame preventing replacement hydras from emerging further. Black blood splattered everywhere across muddy ground and armor. Disabled neck stumps flailed uselessly around the two warriors tirelessly chopping and burning in a bold, unified assault. The Hydra was driven relentlessly back towards its swampy pool refuge as its numbers dwindled before such unexpected opposition. Soon just one immortal head remained flinging itself wildly to avoid similar decapitation. But Heracles managed grazing cuts inflicting slowing injuries while avoiding venom sprayed in the brute's death throes. At last the moment came as Iolaus roared triumph with the torch raised high. Heracles ducked low and sprang upwards in a mighty leap, sword scything a brutal arc that completely severed the final hydra head off its carotid foundation. Then as the fully decapitated body floundered, spewing dark blood into the waters, Iolaus once again jammed fiery brands mightily onto raw bleeding neck meat, fully preventing any further head regeneration forever. Breathing heavily amidst slaughtered hydrocore and toxic blood now staining the Lake Luna surroundings, Heracles and Iolaus clasped each other's shoulders in shared camaraderie and relief. Against all odds their coordinated teamwork overcoming regenerative immortality had proven victorious this day. Though exhausted beyond mortal endurance by the epic life and death struggle matched perhaps only in primordial chaos eras, Canny Heracles summoned energy enough yet to laboriously bury the still immortal final Hydra head deep underground where darkness would seal its power rendering harmless thereafter. His remaining labors ahead facing worse monsters still, Heracles then drained further disgusting black Hydra blood into special vials brought for just this opportunity should triumph occur. Once exposed to air, the thick fluid would harden rapidly over hours into lethally poisonous consistency able to coat mortal weapons with a venom celebrated throughout lands for potency dispatching enemies painfully. Heracles' new dipping future arrows in such corrupting essence ought to give advantage when battling mythic beasts or god warriors in days ahead. Thus the Lernaean Hydra's blood legacy might poison countless others even past its own decapitation this day by the hero's flashing bronze orbs. And so Heracles overcame regenerative immortality through both brute god-gifted perseverance and well-timed clever improvisation alongside brave Iolaus. His victory stands immortalized as symbolic of true unbreakable Greek spirit struggling against seemingly hopeless odds until wresting sweet success from certain gutting failure in the final moments. Indeed, the Hydra encounter became an icon representing man's ability to somehow persevere and problem-solve to eventually ascend over archaic forces seeking destruction against mortal flesh. We hope you enjoyed this bloody telling of Heracles versus the nine-headed Hydra of Mythic Lerna. Let us know what other monsters or labors you want to see covered in future videos. And make sure to check out one of the videos on screen. 
Until next time on Mythologies Monsters.